So, the one final thing I need to think about is how do we stop it from selecting one that's already been selected? Well, let's have a look and see what we can do. Once we are, once we've pressed the word once, we should be putting in a, a log somewhere, or making a list of ones that we've already pressed so that we can't press it again. Um, so let's just create one more list up at the top, and this time it's going to be a string list. Um, string. And we're going to call this pressed words. And again, at the end of each one, we're going to need to make sure that we clear that list. So let's clear it now. Uh, pressed words dot clear. And so we need to populate this after we've pressed them. So we're going to go pressed words dot add. And we've got word dot component in children text mesh dot text that will add it to the list of pressed words now that in and of itself isn't going to do anything uh, so we need to put something in here module solve or flashing or pressed words dot contains uh, word dot get component in children. Oh, I need the parentheses there as well. Now, if I was really sensible, what I would have done a little while back is replace this really long line word dot get component children dot text mesh and, and dot text. I would have replaced that with a, a shorter variable, um, which you can do if I go into the start method. Um, but hey ho. So if the module is solved, or it's flashing, or press words contains get component in children, if it contains one of the already contained words, then it's going to return and it's not going to do anything. As soon as we've gone through, it's going to add that word onto that new list and then uh, compile that list to, to check that it's not there. And then once we've got to the solve bit, it's going to clear those words out. Obviously, we don't need to do it if it's solved. So let's see if that works. So if we press that, that's fine. See, I'm pressing it again, but nothing is coming up on the log. Before, that would have kept, uh, kept it coming up again and again. Go through all of them, we've got that wrong. We've got that wrong. Now it's tabernacular, tellurian, tenderometer, and tachoscopy. Go flash green. Actually, I don't like that it's flashing for longer. I think it should flash for the same amount of time. So let me take that back down to 10. How are we all doing in chat? I hope what I'm saying is making some semblance of sense. And again, if you're um, sat in and listening, you're all very welcome here. So, <coughs> that's that's basically um, it for the, for the basic prefab of it, at least. Let's save this down here and save my project. <coughs> now, I want to add some custom sounds to this so that when you press the buttons, it makes a particular sound. Um, and when you solve it, again, it makes a, a different sound. So let's find some sounds. After I've had a vape. Let's find some. Oh, the other thing we're going to do before we do sounds is what's called interaction punches. Now, interaction punches are the things on the bomb where you, when you press the button, the bomb, if that's the bomb, it goes that little movement that the bomb does, so it looks like you're physically pressing something. It's a little thing, but quite a few modules miss it off, um, and it, it really upsets me to see, including some of mine actually. I've got a list of ones that don't currently have interaction punches that I need to change. Now, there's a choice you can make. You can either have the interaction punch always appear, even if these are false. Uh, but in our case, what we're going to do is um, put it down here. So word, because it's the selectable that has the thing, dot add interaction punch. 0.5f um, gives, gives it half an interaction punch. We want to give it a full interaction punch for these four. 
Um, so that means every time you press a button, it's going to do a little wobble, unless it doesn't get there, like, for example, because it's doing something. Um, and that's the only interaction punch we need. So we want two sounds, one for when we press it, and one for when it's flashing. Um, so we can get some different sorts of sounds. I was going to use some standard ones that I've used uh, in other modules. Um, in fact, I'll show you how to do a, um, a basic um, built-in sound, first of all. So let me get the plunger button up, because I use a basic sound in there. Okay, so if you want it to do a basic sound, in this case the big button press, which is that sound that it makes when you press a button, you put that in. Get a component, came sound over, sound effect, big button press, transform. Okay, and that means every time we press a button, it might not show it up in test harness. I don't think it does do in game sounds in test harness, but let's find out. No, nothing there, so it's not showing the interaction punch either. Which is a shame, but never mind. Um, so this is the line that you need. And again, this is readily available in, in lots of different scripts, including mine. It's, it's not one of those ones that you need to know how it works. You just need to know that it does work. Um, get component, KM audio, um, play game sound up, transform, KM sound over, sound effect, or big button press. And that could be button press, or it could be button release. Or if you want... Uh, I think it's cut wire, something like that. Uh, but there's um, lots of different sounds that you've got as standard. Uh, I'm actually going to use a different sound. And I'm going to go to LED grid for this. Because uh, I've got some different sounds there. And my pass sound. And I've got A, B, C, and D as well. I quite like those. So I'm going to use these. A sound, B sound, D sound, C sound. And I'm also going to use strike sound and pass sound. It's going to recycle them completely. I might change them at a later date, but for now I'm quite happy just to use these. So I'm going to go back into my um, T words folder, assets. I'm going to create myself a new folder, and I'm going to call it sound effects. Into there, I'm going to paste my newly acquired sound effects. It's going to recompile them into Unity. Now, this next stage is very important because it's the one exception um, to bundling stuff. Oh, I'm just going to get rid of that because. It's the one exception to bundling stuff. Any sound effects, custom sound effects that you want in the game, you need to add to mod.bundle. So remember we've talked about this being in mod.bundle, down here, your, your prefab. You also need to do that with the sound effects. So select them all and add them to mod.bundle. If you want to be able to hear them in game, you also need to add them to the test harness, which is up here. So select the test harness, lock it, select them, and drag them onto audio clips. And there they are. Okay? So far, so good. Now, we're going to refer to each of these by name um, in the first instance. And to get the audio line for custom audio, uh, okay. <coughs> this is the line you need. It's audio dot play sound at transform, open brackets, open quotes, and then the name of the sound, the sounds, for example, will go A sound, uh, close quotes, comma, transform, close parentheses. Okay? So now every time we press a button, we're going to get the A sound. Which will sound like this. Okay? Now, we might want it to do more than just the A sound. We might want it to play 
a different sound depending which stage we're at, which we can do. To do that, we're going to need to put these sound files into an array that we can access. So I'm going to go up here and go public audio, audio clip array. <coughs> Excuse me. And we'll call these sounds. This is going to create one for us down here in the inspector. Sounds, there we go. Let's just lock that. And I'm going to drag all of these in so I can refer to them in the same array. The only difference that you need between um, referencing a sound directly, like I've done here, a sound, and referencing it in an array is that you need to put sounds, and then it's array reference, in this case zero, dot name. Because it needs the name of the sound. That's why we used the, the green quote marks before. So it's very important that you put dot name if you're putting them in from an array. In this case, I actually want to call that stage.name so that it will play a different sound depending on the stage. So now we we'll get. What would be really nice is if we could have it play that one is always A, that one is always B, that one is always C, that one is always D. Um, how would we do that? Um, the way we could do that is by having a reference on each of these um, words. It's a slightly complicated way of doing it. I'm not sure I want to... Uh, let's do it very quickly. Let's create a new C sharp script and we're going to call this sound reference. Bring this into Atom. <coughs> uh, we don't need any of that. We're just going to have a public int sound ref. Okay, that is it for that. This sound reference script is then going to go onto each one of our words here. So let's select these, unlock the inspector, and drag our sound reference onto. Yeah, oh, hang on, maybe I don't want to do that. Um, Yes, I did, because these are my selectables. So let's, let me do that again. Sound reference, drag it onto there. Now we can give each of these a sound reference. Okay. And now, instead of going sounds stage, we're going to go sounds um, word dot get component. Just get component this time, because it's not in the children, it's actually on the, the parent object. So get component um, sound reference dot sound ref hopefully that will compile oh no because I'm not using so I'm going to need to put using that new script that I just made called sound references I need to put that in at the top if I'm going to use that script somewhere else I need to put it up there sound reference uh, okay oh load this yes. Oh. That can't be right. Now what am I doing? Um, there, that's where it goes. Public sound reference array. This is a really um, complicated way of, of achieving something uh, right here, by the way. Um,
Oh yeah, that one. I'm gonna get rid of that in a minute. Um, so the sound reference scripts, I actually now need to assign these um, to the thing, which I can't do yet because I've got a compiler error. So we're going to get five three to get rid of that line for a minute. Okay, so now my sound ref thing is there, and I can add each of my objects that contain that sound reference file onto there, like so. And so now, if we need to go uh, and put this back in, take component sound reference, put sound ref dot name. Oh no, the dot name. No, hang on. Okay, I might just give up on this uh, for now until I've had a chance to give it a little bit more thought um, because this is uh, not not very helpful uh, for, for you guys at home. So let's just change that back to stage for now. And that sound ref will go away. It goes. I'm also going to get rid of the sound reference file from there and delete it from my project and we'll just pretend that didn't happen <laughs> and I was trying to do something more clever than it than it needed to be uh, vaping isn't good for your health now I know what is using KM Modkit for um, Marcus using KM Modkit is um, the Modkit extensions file which lets us access other more specific parts of the Modkit I'm not entirely sure I've actually used it in this um, but there's one way to find out. If I take it out for a minute. So you see here things like get battery count and is indicator off. It doesn't know what they are because I've taken out that KM mod kit bit. So we put that back in and it's all fine. Um, wow, that was a really unhelpful thing to, to show you right there. But for now, it's just going to go ABCD every time. Um, and if we get it wrong, we want to play um, the strike sound. Oops. Uh, so it's going to be the strike sound was where was that? In the it was in sounds. Pass sound is four. Strike sound is five. So strike sound is five. Our sound is four. So now I will go back and change that other thing, but I'll do it after I'm after I'm finished. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna get a little error beep. If we get it right though. And there we go. And the lights go off. My LED is still there. Part of me wants to get rid of that as well, but then I think it does look too much like the souvenir, so I think just keeping that there is a, a nicer way to go with this. 